Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's uh, workshop here. So we have the digital photography for iPads. Really excited to bring this to you guys. Um, so yeah, my name is uh, Tom Strenat, and uh, I'm the uh, lead digital artist of the Creator Space. And this is a special uh, holiday edition we're calling uh, about uh, you know looking at how can we use our iPads, and we've called it iPads, but this can also translate to um, you know to iPhones and anything like that. So it's uh, you know basically they're Apple personal devices and Furthermore, you can apply these same techniques to Android devices, other phones, but we're going to be demoing the uh, iPad and iPhone specifically. And uh, again, just those tools and techniques, they're pretty universal, but we're going to look at some of the features specifically for those devices. So really excited to be able to do that. So just want to uh, thank all of our partners in this project for making this happen. We have the Canada Council for the Arts. Then we have our library partners. So we have the Blue Mountains Public Library, we have the Collingwood Public Library, and we have the Wasaga Beach Public Library. Now, the exciting thing too is these uh, library partners, this is, you know, this technology loan. So the Creator Space, we've put uh, technology in the library so that you can take out. So there's an iPad uh, Pro at the Blue Mountains Public Library. There's also some iPads available at the Collingwood Public Library. And uh, soon we'll be getting some iPads at the Wasaga Beach Public Library. So, you know, and, and these tools can always be used. So again, we're, we're really focusing on personal devices. You know, what, what can you use? What do you have out there? And, uh, we, you know, we want to um, really create a universal uh, uh, tool set for you. So let's get started. We've got lots to talk about. Uh, let's get going on this. So, uh, you know, how to capture better photos. And I think this is, we're going to talk a little bit of theory and then we're going to get right into the, the good fun stuff of getting some uh, some pictures and, and looking at how our devices work. So, you know, if, if you're new to photography and you're a hobbyist or even if you're already, you know, well-versed in photography, you might want to always go back. And, and this is something that, you know, I always think about this too, is the, the rule of thirds, composition. It's a rule. That every rule can be broken, especially in a creative uh, environment where we're always, you know, pushing things, changing things. So definitely don't want to say, oh, you have to do this. But the rule of thirds is a really great tool to look at how to make your photos. So look at this grid. So we have, you know, essentially uh, intersecting points. So if you take a grid, three lines that are horizontal, three lines uh, that are vertical, or essentially two lines that are vertical, two lines that are horizontal. But those, those uh, the quadrants that you get from those intersecting lines, uh, those points are points of interest. And naturally our eyes will like to go to that and, you know, and, and can enjoy that in terms of a compositional standpoint and, you know, making that, making that work and, and making that interesting. So, you know, that's, that's the whole uh, cool thing about, uh, you know, what's possible with the rule of thirds. So this is what we want to think about rule of thirds. It's a great way to, to start your composition, but you know, ultimately, even if we've centered framed, that's fine too, but we're saying, how do we make something even better, right? So how to capture better photo images. So this is the cool thing. So if you start thinking about this, you're doing holiday photos, you know, family, friends, events, gatherings, food, you know, some of us might just want to do a bunch of food, you know, food photos. There's a lot of foodie things happening now. I love taking food photos, um, you know, sharing it on social media and so on. Just think about this rule of thirds and this can work horizontally or vertically. So, you know, it, it works either way. So you can just flip this to be a vertical idea. And then you're, again, you're putting the intersecting, that person would be on the right side of a vertical photo, right? So if horizontal, vertical, either way it works, right? So that's, that's really nice to, to know. Now, uh, you know, use of depth in photos, I think is really exciting and interesting. And, you know, and that's, uh, you know, how, do, how does that work and, and how can we make that work? It's, uh, uh, you know, by really putting, working on things like, you know, our foreground, um, our middle ground and our background. So usually our middle ground will be the subjects and our foreground will be, you know, what, what we see in, in front. And then the background is way in the distance. And we're going to play with that today when, in a demonstration. How do we deal with, you know, foreground, background, middle ground? And, uh, and that's, you know, that's great. Like, why not? You know, that could be really neat. Um, so, you know, how, how can we work on that? How can we make that work um, better for our photos and uh, essentially, you know, create an environment that can, uh, um, you know, that can, that can add some depth to the storytelling. I think that's always key. Like we're really looking at how do we, how do we tell better stories in these photos too? So the holiday photos, 
you know, great, you just take a picture, but how can we capture some sort of a story, a family story, a story of what's happening, you know, a specific event, maybe there's a concert or something, but you want to think about how can you tell the story? So think about that too. If you're, let's say, at a concert, you know, how can you make the foreground, middle ground, background? So obviously the background could be maybe the artist performing, the middle ground could be you and your friends or family, and then the foreground, you can think about you know, what that is. So maybe there's other people, maybe there's some sort of decorations, a Christmas tree, things like that. So playing with the foreground. Um, and that's, you know, really drawing us through a story that the audience can uh, appreciate and uh, really come to understand and enjoy. So that's always the, the real fun part of, of, uh, of working in, in these uh, layers. And this is important because they're two dimensional. Remember, we need to try to show depth. Otherwise, everything looks flat. Right, so that's really the key is creating this illusion of space and, and really uh, trying to, to create something, again, that can guide the eye from the foreground, middle ground, background. And you can play with different things. Like you could have a foreground that's you know the prominent image and then there's still layers with middle ground background. So I'm not saying the middle ground has to be your key of the subject, but it's just thinking of these layers. Without depth, the image is flat. So we go back to cave painting. So always thinking about that. If your photo is gonna look like a cave painting, Great, they're amazing and, and forward thinking at their time, but we're, we wanna go beyond that and we wanna get those layers going now. Okay, so layers create depth in the image and that's really, you know, how do you create space? And this is important because this, this kind of, this uh, um, uh, painting, you know, this is where it started. How do you start to create landscapes and, and draw people through a story? So you see kind of the foreground, the middle ground, and the background, like the clouds, the distant hills. But your eye can go on this journey through this. So again, this is you know a more elaborate and complex um, composition, but you can see that depth is is really engaging and interesting to see, and I think that's really the key thing is engaging, making sure that people want to want to look at your photos. They don't want to necessarily, you know, you, you put a photo up and people just ignore it, right? You want to get people engaging, telling the story. So again, think of these layers, and this will apply. I think what's important too is we never want to think about, you know, we call this the holiday edition. But it's not like holiday photos are just, you know, take away, you know, take them in their throwaways, but really think of them artistically and how do you elevate yourself so that, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, as a, as, as a digital artist, uh, as an aspiring digital artist, aspiring photographer or a, a professional photographer or a hobbyist photographer, whatever kind of level you're at, you want to be able to showcase your ability to tell these stories through the images. And, and that again, these are just these, these uh, kind of timeless classic compositional tools and you, know, and, and you put these into your toolbox and then you, you use them and then you're gonna have these really engaging and memorable photos and people will start to notice and say, wow, I really like your photos versus just this kind of massive amount of social media posting of everything. So if we start to think about our photos in that kind of uh, area, we can really help um, you know, tell better stories, have more engagement, and also promote ourselves as artists too. So that's really a key aspect to it too. Okay, depth helps present the story of the moment, right? So look at this, we have the road into the distance, there's sunlight, and there's, there's two kids playing with like monster trucks in the, in the foreground here. Really cool story. So that again, look at the depth, like we're seeing, okay, this is gonna be, you know, the sunset, it's the end of the day, kind of, you know, looks like summer. And, you know, the kids have been playing and it's kind of like, it looks like the end of a day of a good, good, strong, long day of playing hard for the kids. Again, that's telling us a story versus if I just had a close up of these two kids playing, we don't get all this other information. So that depth always helps us tell a story. Um, and, you know, sometimes in the moment, it's hard to find the depth. It's hard to find the composition. But, you know, just think about it and practice it and practice will make perfect. And that's the whole thing is you try it out, you practice it, and then you can see about, you know, it becomes kind of a second nature as you get used to it, as you practice it. It really does become second nature. And I think that's really the beautiful thing of uh, getting into these. Subjects can be used as layers too. So look at this. We have the, the foreground of the three kids. They're in, in focus with the dog. Then the, the parents or the adults are in the back. They're slightly out of focus. And then furthermore, the trees and the trail in the background go more and more out of focus. But what a beautiful story. Like, okay, they're on the trail hiking um, and then the parents are kind of behind, but the focus is on the kids. And here we have a whole story. This could have just been a photo with everyone 
all in focus and you know great but instead we have this kind of a story that helps us uh, create things and we're used to this kind of selective depth if you will uh, to in, in, in films uh, it's very cinematic it's very painterly again selected depth if you look at the classic paintings that's the same idea too what's in what's like your what's lit what's not what's dark you know what's less uh, sharp and details and that was the idea of making this this kind of depth and, and what's in focus. So again, subjects can be used as layers. So think of that too. It doesn't have to just be a tree. It could be people, it could be your foreground and middle ground and background, etc. Okay, so good exposure creates good photos. And we'll look at this again. You know, so you're basically, if you tap on the area of your screen on an iPhone or an iPad, you start to, you can adjust the brightness. And you're also telling the, the device to specifically expose for that area. And I think that's really important, specifically exposed to that area so that it's, you know, you get the right exposure. So on the left, you see this, you know, blown out image really looks like garbage because it's blown out. You can't really tell the details, you know, and sure, we can try to fix some of this in post-processing, but, you know, why not get a better exposure right away? So on the right, we have a nice exposure. We can see everything and it's not blown out. And that's the whole thing. Now with digital imagery, I think what's really important is that, you know, remember that it's harder to fix things that are blown out than things that are slightly darker. And, you know, if you come from an analog photography world, it was always the opposite. You know, there was a, you know, with film, with actual emulsion, you're overexposing a little bit because you wanted to get, uh, uh, you know, a good negative, a thick negative, it would be called, to, you know, print from and, and to work from it. So it's kind of the opposite. With digital sensors, you want to actually underexpose a little bit and you can bring things up. It's much, much harder to fix things that are too bright and overexposed and blown out than things that are slightly darker. You can bring them up. And that's really an important takeaway because we don't. Um, so, again, if you come from an analog world, you might be used to doing it that way. But you want to start thinking of it the other way where, you know, keep it darker. You can bring it up. So, again, the image on the left, not a great image to start with. Image on the right, very workable. It, you can see maybe it's a touch dark. You might want to bring it up but that's easy to do versus the other one, you're just gonna not be able to do much with it. It's just blown out. And that just means the information isn't there. Like it blows it out, the information's missing in the digital world. So there's, there's really nothing there. Okay, macro shots. This is one of the most you know, fun things of doing holiday photos, food shots, everything, macro shots. Now our iPads and iPhones are amazingly capable of doing these macro shots, getting right in there. The weird thing is, is you have to really get, you know, that, that phone, you know, so you're taking that phone and like you have to, you're bringing it right, right close. So it's like right onto, you know, someone's face or like a, a food item or, or an object. So those, that's how you get these really cool macro shots. You get close up right in there and, um, and it's really a close range lens. So it's, a, it, it, it's close focusing. It could be focusing just like a few centimeters away. And the iPhones and iPads are specifically designed to create these great macro shots. So if you get right in there, I, it, I wouldn't necessarily say to do this with people, but with, you know, uh, let's say gifts, food, drinks, you get right in there and you get an amazing macro shot. And I think that's, you know, can be a, a, a you get these nice shots. Like look at this, this sample here, we get right in there. You get this really nice shallow depth of field. And again, sh depth of field refers to what's in focus. So even the shot right now, like I'm in focus, background's out of focus. So it's a shallower depth of field. Otherwise, you can you can you know get your phone to take have everything in focus, and we have that that long depth of field. That's fine, but what's always a little more interesting is to have a little bit of that shallow depth of field, and and that's you know kind of differentiates your photos potentially from other photos that you know where everything's kind of just taken, all everything's in focus. So we get into these macro shots, selective focus, foregrounds in focus, backgrounds really blurred and beautiful. And, and look at all the reflective surfaces, but it's really cool. There's really shallow, shallow depth of field. Only a little bit's in focus on that first uh, 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 Christmas tree bulb and the ornament. There's just a little bit in focus, but you can see the beginning of it's out of focus and then right behind it's out of focus, but just, you know, kind of in between is in focus. Really, really shallow, really beautiful. Okay, bokeh is the holy grail of photography. And you might've heard about this term and, you know, and it's really using a shallow depth of field to create a blurred area of the image. And it's essentially you achieve this by blurring out the background. And again, that could be by, you know, going in macro, 
and are also choosing uh, focus. And also our, our iPhones now, uh, the newer devices and newer iOS, the operating systems, allow you to do things that are in portrait mode, which is a really new exciting feature because the portrait mode allows you to, you know, it, it creates more of a bouquet. So it's somewhat of a digital process, uh, not necessarily a, you know, through lenses and through focus and stuff, but it's a bit of a digital process, but you can achieve that as well. So look at this, this beautiful ornament reflecting onto a tree. And then you have all this bouquet of the Christmas lights in the background, blurry and that nice kind of glow of, of color patterns. And it, it's quite interesting. So again, this photo versus if everything was in focus, what a beautiful photo this is versus what you might typically see of just, here's just a Christmas tree with some lights in the background, right? So how do we create these kinds of better photos? Really, uh, it's a challenge, but it's a great achievement when you can create this kind of a, a bouquet type uh, photo, which is really neat. Okay, then as we, we're gonna take a bunch of samples today, so we'll get through, uh, we'll get to some demos and look at, you know, what can we do and how can we make this work? And um, the last thing here is you can always fix it in post. So the good, the cool thing is that all the photos you take on your phone directly in the photo app of, of uh, on Apple uh, devices, you can do post processing. So post processing is when you take your photo and then you manipulate it and you adjust it and you work with what the parameters are. So maybe it's too dark, as I mentioned, you're bringing it up a little bit. Maybe you want it more warmth, so you're adding a little bit of yellow red tones. Maybe you want it cooler, so you're adding blue tones. Maybe you want it black and white. Maybe you want more contrast. So all these fun tools are you know, what's referred to as post-processing. Most photos that you see, that especially with photographers and as digital artists, uh, you know, really looking at post-processing at some point. You're always doing that. Think about even if you're doing putting something on social media, you might be applying a Instagram filter, uh, those kinds of things. So those are all post-processing because you're filtering, you're adding contrast, you're working on that in that manner. So it's a it's a really interesting um, uh, concept, an interesting way to think of uh, um, the fact that you have the image, but then you can work on it directly on your device. So next week, after we do our demo, I'm just going to pitch it now and, and kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, promote it now. And then uh, I'll say it again at the end. But next week, we're going to be doing a post-processing workshop. And we're also going to be doing a, a publishing workshop on how to create a photo book that, you know, a digital photo book that you can then share with family and friends, maybe after the holidays, um, and then kind of to celebrate what you've gone through. Maybe you do a bunch of cooking and you're trying out different recipes and you know you want to make a uh you know a book of 12 your 12 favorite recipes for the holidays and that could be something we'll look at so those are some of our upcoming courses so stay tuned for those for sure so we're gonna now uh you know let's get let's get into some demo work so i'm just gonna switch over here just bear with me for a minute and uh we're gonna get going first i'm gonna start with the um with my ipad i'm just gonna get this started here Okay, so let me just see if this is working. So here, okay, perfect. So we have our, this is the iPad. So I've gone into the camera mode and you can see, so I've set up a little bit of a, uh, kind of a st still life we'll call it, but I've set up this, uh, this kind of imagery um, of uh, uh, the snowman and some cookies and things like that. So, you know, first of all, there is the, the grid and you can see this grid, um, coming up and I think I just lost my connection. So let's just go back on that. So you see this, uh, this cool, this grid shows up that really helps us create those line, those rule of thirds. So you can see in the crosshairs if I put the snowman into those crosshairs, that helps me create the rule of thirds and figure out my composition. So I can have the eggnog on one side. I have the snowman on the other side and this is a great way to create my rule of thirds so imagine if we don't have the beverage you know so we're back to you know how do we we can create that kind of an image with the uh, the snowman like so and again we're having those rule of thirds from the cookies to the snowman so you know let's look at that so right now this is this is pretty bright so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tap onto the snowman and what I'm going to do is when you tap on it, you get a little bit of a, a brightness icon. 
So I'm just going to bring that down and a lot more interesting. And I have some Christmas lights here in the background and I think they've kind of faded on me. But um, this is the whole thing is how do we how do we work with that? So I'm going to take down some of my front light here and, you know, really play with that. So look if I get right in here and, and we have these Christmas lights in the background. And that's the whole idea is playing with, you know, what's what's in the background and, you know, what's in focus, what's out of focus. And we start to get a really interesting image um, by, you know, getting in there and working on that rule of thirds idea. Right. So that's that's a really cool, cool uh, approach to it. So and again, just bear with me here for a second. And we're going to we're going to basically I'm going to get some of these Christmas lights in a bit closer and play with what's available here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna get some Christmas lights, redo my lighting here a little bit, and we can really play with, with what's happening here. Okay, so here we go. Here's our image. So here's here's those Christmas lights I was talking about in the background. And you know, and that's that's the whole neat thing, is like just figuring out what is the right kind of exposure. So I'm also gonna I'm just gonna turn off my um, my additional light here. Let's get into a bit of a darker atmosphere. So you can see how if I do my rule of thirds and I can have some Christmas lights and then I can play with kind of what's what's in focus. Now by holding on to my subject for three about two seconds, I get something that says the AEAF lock. Can you see that on top there, that little yellow? Now what it's done is it's made everything, it's, it's going to keep my snowman in focus. It's going to put everything else out of focus. So I get those nice blurred backgrounds. So let's let's flip around this way to just to get this kind of a rule of third. So again, same thing. I'm just going to click on the snowman. It's going to lock the focus on the snowman. There we go. Well, let's do this one more time. Just gonna hold on the snowman there. Get that lock. Okay, perfect. And you can see the other stuff in the background is is slightly blurred and out of focus, and it's really cool. So this is a nice kind of rule of thirds. You can see some Christmas lights in the background and so on. So that's a really interesting way we can you know get into that. So remember, all we're doing is we want to lock our focus, our autofocus, and our exposure, so it's not changing. Look what happens if I unclick it. Things are gonna go brighter darker and look at all the craziness that's happening and the, the lights blown out in the background not a very nice looking image at all right so right i'm going to just zoom in here a little bit so now watch if i hold on to the snowman here first i'm going to say okay let's get that exposure i'm going to darken it up a little bit like so and i'm going to lock the snowman and now everything else stays out of focus so what I've done here is I've put this uh, this light in the background that's on. And you know, what's happening is I'm finding that the um, the background of it isn't necessarily the best because it's it's kind of blowing out that. So this is an important uh, demonstration, and that's why I turn it on, because it's gonna be super in in generally when we're going places, like let's think about you know, restaurants, homes, everything has these like kind of low level of lighting. Uh, especially during the holidays. So look what happens now. Now I'm dealing with a little bit less light and that's okay. But now I don't have that blown out background. So it's a much more effective looking image. So think about if there's different lamps on and they're blowing out your background, that's a really key takeaway is to turn those lights off. Just use the Christmas lights and you know we can play with what's what's in focus with the Christmas lights. And it's a lot more interesting to just play with these kinds of Christmas lights. So I'm going to bring these a little bit closer in here, get a little bit more of a bundle of these around here. There we go. I'm going to reposition this a little bit. Okay. So this is the whole idea. See, I got these Christmas lights here. I have my snowman here and playing with those and then figuring out, you know, what's, what's, uh, what do we want to be in focus on? Okay. And now I'm going to go back to, Putting a little bit of light here from the foreground, just a little bit of a 
additional light here. And again, see how he gets really bright? So I'm gonna touch on him and get that focus locked, right? And you can see, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is just take down the exposure a bit so I can get that nice uh, blurry Christmas lights behind there. Okay, so now you can see he's in focus and my background is out of focus. Okay, and let's go a little bit more. Right, so we're gonna just play with what what do we want in in uh, you know exposure? What do you want out of uh, out of focus? What do you want in focus? I'm holding on that lock on that, and now I'm keeping the other elements you know out of focus in the background. So this creates that that nice kind of bouquet element of you know being able to 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 work on that kind of an image. So now let's look at if we're dealing with like some food shots. So I have some nice cookies here. So this is what I was talking about. If you get really close in here for these macro shots, so I'm about, you know, five centimeters away. So this is lock on here. And look how cool that is. So I'm going to take this picture. And here's the picture. Uh, let's get rid of that. Get another picture here. Okay, so we get these really nice, cool uh, pictures that are close up and, you know, super macro. So really cool. So now we can see, like see in this photo, how we have the, the plate is a bit out of focus. That cookie has different layers. We get these really cool macro shots. So I'm about, you know, three to five centimeters away from these cookies. The iPad is right in there. I'm getting these nice, cool shots this way. So that works really nicely. Okay, so next, let's go back to our snowman here. I'm just gonna make him a little bit darker. Great, okay, and let's just see what that looks like. So, oh, he's a little bit blurry. Let's do that again. Okay, and let's play a little bit more with a little bit more light here. So again, that rule of thirds, putting him right in there. And I'm going to lock on him. There we go. I'm just gonna get a, a, a rough photo here so we can do some post-processing next week. Yeah, that's looking good. Now, um, in terms of our next, uh, uh, I'm gonna switch over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over. I'm gonna get us onto uh, an iPhone. So that's what we can do with the, um, the iPad. Okay, and let me just see if this is up now. Here we go, okay, so here's the, here's the iPhone and so we're gonna just get some pictures here. So again, look at look at it's pretty bright. And now with this, this is an iPhone uh, 11, and it's pretty similar to you know the 12 and 13 and so on. But we have three lenses. So I'm gonna go here on the bottom. You'll see like the 0 0.5. So it's the ultra wide. The one is kind of the normal lens, and then there's like the super like this kind of telephoto lens. 
So same idea here. So if I if I press on this, I can play with you know how bright do I want this? And again, I can create some really interesting images. So I'm going to take that picture. And that's really nice. Okay. And then the so same idea again. So if, if I really play with you know what's what's in focus, so rule of thirds. I'm going to make him a bit brighter, like so, or darker, I mean. I'm going to hold on him. Okay, so I've locked the focus right on him. Take that picture. Okay, what does that look like? That looks pretty nice. So we're getting some, some interesting photos. So again, just that rule of thirds, playing with Christmas lights. I know these aren't uh, uh, the perfect photos here. We're just kind of doing a demo here in a studio. Um, but, uh, you know, this, this whole idea of keeping things uh, in, the, uh, in the background uh, blurred. So let me just get back to photo here. So here's this one. And let's go back into this tighter mode. And you can see now how those lights are... Uh, you know, a bit out of focus. And here's that idea now of like some foreground, middle ground, and background. Right, so the plate to the snowman, and then, you know, to the distant background. Right, so we got again the plate, the snowman, and our distant background. So playing with that kind of idea. So uh, loading everything up that way. Okay, so let me just go a little bit better over here. And we're gonna do some more. And see how important, you know, these, these backgrounds are really important to, you know, think about what, what we can have in the background. So if I had more of a Christmas lights, Christmas trees, that could be really great. So here's the idea. So we got that. So imagine again, if there's like some Christmas trees in the background, we got our snowman and you know, foreground, uh, middle ground snowman to the background. Now here's the cool thing. So what we can do and what this really helps this photo mode is I can go to portrait mode on this, uh, on this device and look at what it's doing. It's doing this instant bouquet and uh, it's really cool. Look how everything's getting out of focus in the background. And this is one of my favorite tools with the uh, with these iPhones now is look how we can create this instant bouquet of the of our uh, of our snowman and it's going to move his skis a little bit. So I have to go a little bit further away for this portrait mode, but it, it just lets me create these beautiful you know bouquet images with the background out of focus. So how cool is that? That starts to get really nice when we get into uh, some interesting imagery. I'm just going to do a little bit more distancing here so we can start to look at, okay, what's keeping just... Telling a little bit of story, like the snowman's kind of wants to get to the cookies. So he's in focus, and then the cookies are slightly blurred, right? And that, that's really neat. So we get that bouquet, and uh, it's done in what's called the portrait mode of the iPhone. So that's a really great tool. Okay, so now um, let's go back to the photo mode and I'm going to play, play with the, uh, this, the iPhone again in this like macro mode and I, I find this, so we can use the, the foreground could be the edge of the plate. And that's really cool. So again, look at that. Like we got that foreground of the plate. We got the cookies in focus, slightly the back of the plate. And then we get into some background uh, like Christmas lights. So let's go back on this again and play a little bit with this kind of color of what's happening. And I'm really, really close to the cookies. So how that looks really yummy to eat, and uh, you know it's a it's a, such a nice uh, you know image. Uh, again, we got that foreground, middle ground, and focus. I'm going really close to get those macro food shots, 
And this is the whole thing is like, you can get so many, a lot more interesting, uh, you know, these kind of macro shots of, of the subjects and really playing with, um, you know, and still seeing these Christmas lights. So I'm moving right into the person, in this case, a snowman. And I find these are really cool. So they've got that nice blurred background. We got that snowman and so on. And now let's play a little bit with, you know, kind of the, this foreground, middle ground background. And, you know, maybe we want to play with, I'm going to bring this eggnog back in here a little bit and tell a little bit of the story. And you can see here what's in focus. So if I focus on this guy, it's an interesting story because now I'm saying, okay, it's like he's coming to get these cookies, right? So just think about telling these little stories. The snowman is moving towards the eggnog, moving towards the cookies. And we got this little story that we can tell this way. And, uh, and, and it's really an interesting uh, process that way. Um, so again, we can play with, you know, look at these kinds of foreground shots. We can play with, you know, what's, what's in, maybe we want to, we want to kind of focus on the, but look at this shooting through beverages and glass and the reflections are really a cool way to, to play with, uh, things in, uh, you know, in, in this kind of a photography, uh, concept. So isn't that neat? Like we're getting these kind of, you know, distorted backgrounds and trying to tell different stories. So think about, you know, things can be a little bit obscure, right? So we go to a pretty normal photo and, you know, the, the snowman's kind of in the eggnog. And that's the whole fun part is we can really play with, um, you know, what we, what we see and, and how we're, how we're, you know, perceiving these things. Again, this could be just this kind of overhead shot. And, you know, so, and then here more in line with, you know, the, the rule of thirds. If I kind of go this way. That's kind of neat. All right, just kind of getting everyone in there. And again, a little bit in the studio here, a little bit of uh, lights and some of our cases and things that are um, not necessarily very halt festive, but it, it's a fun uh, way to look at the... Uh, you know, getting, getting these kinds of images together. So I'm going to go super close now. Let's go something like this. So here again, this is the whole idea. What if, what if he is, he is out of focus. And that's that same idea again of like deciding selective focus, what's in focus, what's out of focus and how can that work to help better, you know, tell, tell the stories of, of, uh, of what we're doing. Okay, so let me just look at, uh, I, got, I had a question here. So in terms of um, how do you get this grid? I had one of the questions here. So to get the grid, I'm going to go to, uh, I have my settings here. And what you need to do is you go to, or I think I passed it. No, do, 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 do. You got to go to your camera settings. And here it is. So under camera, so settings on the iPhone, then go to camera, and then you can, you know, decide all the different formats and so on. But here is under grid, you turn it on or off. So right there, that's the grid, on or off. And that lets you put the grid on so you can see, um, you know, what uh, the, um, the the rule of thirds is, right? So that's, that's, that's a really cool uh, process. So then what's important is really like, you know, when you're in this photo mode, then you decide, okay, do you want... Uh, you know, how, that grid, and then you can, you can line everything up really, really nicely to figure out your, your compositions. Again, and then I'm just tapping on this. I'm lowering the little sunshine that I get just to make it either brighter or, or darker. And you're getting right in there. And I'm getting, you know, these are always so juicy to try to get these, these nice shots of, of, uh, you know, beverages. So just, just eggnog really, simple like uh, like this we're just okay it's eggnog but like this again we're set, we're showing that someone wants the eggnog you know just thinking of that storytelling process the snowman wants the eggnog um and it, it really works nicely so that's that's a, a fun tool so then in terms of you know when, when we're taking these photos there's a few modes that you can uh decide um and then uh you know there's there's the flash so up here i can put the flash on or off and I wanted to talk about that because I think what's uh, what's interesting here is uh, is that 
um, the, the, the flash really decides, you know, here, let's just take a picture with the flash. I think, I think it's going to engage itself. No. I'm going to turn, turn the light off here. And I think with flash photography, that's, it, it's an interesting tool as well. But, you know, sometimes then it comes down to, I think I have my flash uh, mode off still. But um, what, what happens with when, you, when you're doing, you know, flash photography is you get that really bright burst sometimes um, that could be, you know, not necessarily desirable. So I'm just going to try and just get a picture. You know, but if I just keep natural light, you know, it's, I don't get that weird, like big flash mode, right? So I think it's, I, I highly recommend to, to go without um, the flash. So keeping that flash off, uh, I think is a really, uh, you know, great uh, tool. So again, back to the portrait mode and there's different uh, settings. So we can say it's studio light contour stage light how cool is that we can get into these like really neat right so it's it's a real spotlight right you can see what how it's darkening the edges and that's really cool look at that like we got this like spotlight that's pretty cool. Like think about putting spotlights on people. So just playing around with these different tools, uh, I think are, are, you know, it's pretty amazing what's, what's always possible in here. Stage light, monochromatic, so we can instantly do black and white kind of photos. And then uh, a high key. And then back to like a natural light. So again, what's, what's in focus, what's out of focus. Just, again, trying to tell these stories with, you know, what's the cookies are in focus, the snowman's out of focus. But I, th I think this is such a cool tool, just being able to do things like the spotlight. So anyways, we've got a really great sample of images and photos. And I think, uh, you know, again, hopefully that's helped to, you know, look at you know, what's possible and, uh, and and how to do it and and, uh, and get some photos going. Now, again, I don't have the best background here. And I totally admit that, and, and you know that's 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 always a, it's a bit of a, uh, you know, it's a bit of a, a studio setting here. So you know we don't really I don't have all this you know nice backgrounds going and things, but I think the the cool the, the, the key takeaway here is that you know if you can prepare some nice backgrounds, like, you know, go in front of a Christmas tree, go in front of lights, go in front of a snowy tree, um, you know, it, it, you can get some really cool imagery that way. And um, and you know playing with what's uh, with what's available. Now I'm gonna just try one thing here. Let me just see if I can do this. So I have I have a snowman here. I'm just gonna try working with the uh, working with a window. And outside the window, um, I'm able to see trees. So, you know, even just playing around with what the background is. So you can see here now, by having the, the tree, let me just go back to like a photo mode here. Let's go a bit closer. And that's, that's already cool. So I'm not outside, but obviously if you put the snowman in front of the trees, that's really neat too. And then just a matter of, you know, working with the, the light kind of balance of how much light is on the snowman, how much light is on the tree and so on. But the backgrounds are really, really important. So I do want to, you know, emphasize that, you know, the backgrounds can be really important in, in telling the story, some Christmas lights, some Christmas trees, um, just thinking about what's there. And if you don't have a great background, try to get really in there, use these techniques. You can use these, uh, these kind of pre-processing techniques, we call them in phone doing things like a spotlight and playing with, with uh, the images. So we've got a pretty good range here of photos. Now, why do I want a range of photos? Because the more photos you can take, you can work with selecting the best ones. 
just, uh, you know, never think that taking one photo, like generally in photography, you're taking, you know, dozens of photos, even hundreds of photos, and you're, then you're picking that perfect shot out of all of those. And that's the, the beauty of it, that you can, you know, digitally, we have the ability to take a lot of photos. And just think about the storage on your phone. So once you decide this is the perfect photo out of maybe took 100, you can delete the rest of them. And that's really important. So if you don't have an iCloud uh, plan that can fit a lot of photos in the cloud, you might be storing it on your phone and that, or your iPad, and that will blog, you know, basically uh, take up a lot of your, your uh, space. So that's something to consider is do you have enough storage space for the photos. So if not, you can go to the iCloud. You can upgrade, it's a few dollars, you can always get more on the iCloud. Now the other thing you can do is you can you can basically get um, hard drives and a lot of these hard drives have USB-C, so newer iPads, iPad Pros and so on, you can plug in with USB-C. You can also get adapters for the, uh, the iPad type connector to um, plug in um, a hard drive. And then you can offload all those photos and put it onto a hard drive. So we'll look at that as well. So that brings me back to post-processing next week and the workshop about creating a book. So publishing a photo book and post-processing holiday photos. That's next week. We'll get into storage, post-processing, using the onboard apps on an iPhone and an iPad, and also looking at uh, a program called Affinity Photo that is available for iPads. And you can do post-processing there. So we're going to kind of take we're going to take the photos that we did today and look at post-processing them and changing them up and all the different effects we can do. So again, the takeaway I would say is make sure, you know, think about your background, think about what's in focus, composition. But, you know, the background is really, really, really important. Uh, you can see I don't have the best backgrounds here in, just in the studio, just kind of dark computers and so on. But, it, you know, if I had a big Christmas tree, uh, that would obviously be great. But... This is the situation. You're going to be working with what you have and uh, it could be, you know, this would be kind of a, like a dark restaurant. Look at the image here. I think this is really cool. I have like these cookies and uh, and uh, the uh, the eggnog uh, behind me here, right? And that's what an interesting story. It's kind of like waiting for me. Like, ooh, after this, I might be able to have some of that. So uh, I have some eggnog and some cookies. So, um, you know, that that whole idea and it's, it's out of focus, right? So this is this is a that composition, rule of thirds. So you could be always thinking about this. So it never really ends. Uh, it never really ends just with uh, with one photo, right? So you got to keep thinking about things. So again, so thanks for joining me. I uh, want to thank all of our partners. So we have the Canada Council for the Arts. We have our library partners, Blue Mountains Public Library. Um, uh, the sorry, Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. So we have iPads available at the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, and soon at the Wasaga Beach Public Library as well. So there you can uh, access this equipment if you don't have your own, but otherwise feel free to use your technology. That was an older iPad, um, I think seventh generation or sixth generation that I was demoing with, and it's iPhone uh, 11, uh, 11 Pro Max with the multi lenses. So, you know, different technology, but you can be using an iPhone 4. All these things are still possible. These macro shots, composition grids, it's all still in the iOS. So we just get into different lenses and things. So just use what you have, experiment, take a lot of pictures and uh, enjoy. And I, I, you know, feel free, you can send me an email, tom at tbmcs.ca if you want to share any comments, if you have any questions, happy to answer them. And otherwise, be sure to check out our next week's, next Thursday's workshop. You'll want to continue on this journey where we post process and we go all the way through to publishing two workshops next week and I hope to see you there. All the best and remember you can rewatch this when we finish here right on the same link through uh, our Vimeo.com. Have a great day and I'll talk to you guys soon. All the best.